Hey folks, what's up? How's it going? So a lot has been changing in my life and I haven't really been active on YouTube. I figured why not catch up? So I asked you guys some questions on my Instagram. So today we're gonna be going through some of those because life has been all over the place. I've, you know, left my job as a chef and we're into a new career path. So first up, what's next? now that you're not a professional chef. Recently, I left the cooking industry to get more into coffee. I really enjoy drinking coffee as well as it provides me a bit more stability for my life. And while maybe I still have to work weekends, at least I have a little bit more flexibility with what I wanna do with my time off. But at the same time, I still get a lot of technical knowledge working in a cafe. So I'm able to learn a lot about coffee and really dive into a specific subject while having a better life balance. Yeah, that's what I've been up to. And this next question is kinda of hand in hand. What is the toughest decision you have had to make that is worth it? And I think it is leaving the restaurant industry and moving more into the coffee industry. Having that sense of balance is really important for myself. While the money is very similar, my stress outside of work has dropped a lot. It's been a really tough decision of leaving something that I did truly love, but at the same time, I'm replacing it with something that I can also continue to grow and love as well. So do you have a family recipe? So no, I do not have a family recipe. Not one that I can be like, oh, my, my grandmother made this and then my mom made this and now I'm making it. I don't really have a strong family um, heritage like that. A lot of people do have that and carry on that dish for generations and generations and slight tweaks to make it their own or make improvements on it. And I found that I just don't have that culinary history in my family. Um, some of my favorite dishes growing up were ones that my mom found on allrecipes.com. So while I don't have per se that family recipe, I still have some things I can look back and be like, oh, I really like that, that's nostalgic. Will you have your own restaurant one day? And I think this is again tied right back into the last question of having a strong family heritage to tie my cuisine into. Working in kitchens, there's a lot of homework. You have to do a lot of research and other kind of like extensive knowledge seeking in your own time. And I've touched on that before in other videos, but a big reason why I was insecure on ever having a restaurant is that I don't have a heritage to like look for inspiration in. And if I was to have a restaurant, how will I tie that into my heritage? And because I feel like that's what a lot of chefs do and it's a great way for chefs to show off where they come from and what they're influenced by. And because I don't have a lot of that stuff, I feel like I was just gonna have to work a lot harder to get to the place that I would want to be at. Again, that creates sacrifices in your own life and you have to let that dream die so you can find something else. I do think that I really wanna be a business owner and I do wanna have one thing that I can pour my heart and my soul into. So for myself, that's gonna be something coffee related. I think having a coffee shop is a little bit more achievable. Any entrepreneur ideas coming up? Um, yeah, having something that is truly yours and your vision is something that's very important to me because I am very creative. I think I have a better idea of how to run a cafe than I do a restaurant. Along with that, I wanna be roasting my own coffee. Um, I feel like that's where my culinary knowledge and skills are gonna play the best part. I think coffee is super interesting from origin to region to the actual bean itself, or like, I guess the fruit. Being able to express that is similar to being a chef, being able to highlight all the natural characteristics that are already in the fruit to making that a drinkable coffee is super intriguing to me and eventually like roast for you guys. That being said, home coffee roasting. Is it worth it? Personally, I've never done it. You definitely can roast coffee at home and it can be a very economical way to have fresh coffee. From what I understand, coffee roasting is very technical. To the average home person, if you're not willing to put in a lot of time, you're not gonna be drinking very good coffee all the time, even if it's fresh. You kinda have to know what you're getting yourself into. It's it's like an espresso machine. For the most part, it's just gonna sit on your counter and look pretty, unless you're making it every single day or you're constantly focusing on how to make it just that much better. For the average person, definitely not. If you're a coffee fanatic, freshest of the coffee beans is you know, very important to you. Yeah, maybe. You can still find really fresh coffee if you have local cafes that roast near you. So if you're in a bigger city and there's a cafe roaster, you can generally find pretty solid coffee in your general area. If you're out in the middle of nowhere, maybe coffee roasting is the best way that you can do that. Are there any foreign countries you would like to live in? Yeah, I think I think I would like to live in New Zealand. Um, I spent a few months there um, quite a few years ago and I really fell in love with the country. I really like how small it is. 
it's like all of Canada packed into like one little country. You got like beaches, you got mountains, you've got rainforest, you have like cool lakes and like volcanoes. And the best part is, is that all the spiders there are non-poisonous and there's no snakes, unlike Australia. But also like the coffee culture is really solid and there's great food and Auckland is just a beautiful city. Um, ideally also, I'd love to go to New York and live there. It is a little bit harder for me to get a visa in America than it is somewhere like New Zealand or Australia or somewhere else in the Commonwealth. Judging the vibe, I think I would really like New York. London, England would also be a really cool place, not London, Ontario. Am I interested in becoming a full-time content creator? I think no. I, I don't think I want to be creating content full-time. I think that really would drain the life out of me as I have another full-time job that I'm extremely passionate about. I like creating content for, you know, like for fun, as well as like being able to say something that I find valuable. So a lot of it is just fun for me. So that's why I make it. But sometimes it can feel like I'm selling my soul a bit. And that's not really a perspective I want to feel, especially when, you know, having a coffee business is the thing I really, really want to be doing. And what is my favorite brewing method slash beans and any recommendations? Personally, if you're just getting into specialty coffee, I think an AeroPress is one of the coolest things you can get. They look like this. It's essentially just a plunger with a little filter at the bottom. So you put like a paper filter here, you screw it on, you put the ground coffee in here, pour coffee over top, let it sit for a minute and then you press it through. Um, James Hoffman has an absolutely incredible method on his um, YouTube channel. If you're coming into specialty coffee having like a French press in the past, this is a similar yet better alternative. It's gonna give you a cleaner cup so there's less grit in it and it's gonna give you a little bit more nuance of flavors and yeah, you'll just probably enjoy it a little bit better. Also, for a lot of the lighter roast coffees that specialty coffee is all about, um, you're gonna get more like acidity as well as more fruity flavors. A lot of coffee that's roasted for like general public is roasted quite dark and it loses its characteristics. So roasting coffee a lot lighter is gonna give you those flavors. A French press can take like five to eight minutes. This takes like two. You pour water in, you swirl it, um, you leave it for a minute, you press it down pretty slowly for a minute and there you go you got 200 milliliters of coffee and it's delicious that's one of my favorite brewing methods for entry level and if you graduate from one of these aero presses i would highly recommend getting an origami dripper these are a bit more expensive they're ceramic they sit on top of here like that and you just like make a pour over. It should take about three minutes in the morning to make a single pour over, but I find the cup is even cleaner than an AeroPress and has a bit more nuance to it. Juicy, full, bold flavors, a lot more delicate, but I think slightly more refined. Start with this and then move on to this. Obviously, the more you get into coffee, you're gonna look at grinders and you're gonna look at kettles. And for this one, you just need any basic kettle. This one, you kind of need a gooseneck kettle, something that has this gooseneck here, just so that you can pour really delicately and not disturb the bed of coffee. As for beans, I find that there's a lot of different styles of coffee that you can try. Like this one from Nemesis, it's got notes of floral, peach, and citrus. So that gives you a little bit more of an idea of what the coffee direction is going into. It's not gonna be very chocolatey, while you might have a little bit of undertones of that in the background, um, it's gonna be roasted way too light to get those dark chocolate kind of nutty flavors. I don't really have recommendations on what beans to get. I think just exploring all different kinds, you're gonna be able to find something vastly different. So just explore with it, have fun. And what is my latest coffee obsession? Right now, I've been getting into all the cool gadgets I can get, the little ways I could make a coffee shop slightly better, whether that's like having this beautiful single dose grinder called the Weber EG1 and how it looks like an absolute rocket ship. Or maybe it's like figuring out what espresso machine does what and what they specialize in. Daydreaming about having a beautiful, unlimited amount of resources of money for my cafe. I think also getting to know espresso and just being able to taste a lot of espresso has been really fun recently. Coffee can all just taste so different. And finally, for the last question of the day, what makes a strong partner? Going to the gym, exercising, 
you know, lifting weights. Makes you pretty strong. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed. And we'll see you next time. Peace.